بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته uh, How is everyone? This is Dr. Hamada talking to you On behalf of Arwad International Schools I'd like to welcome you all to our online learning system Today we will be talking about indefinite pronouns and invert sentences This is part of our grammar course Still talking about subject and verb agreement, chapter 10. This is lesson 10.3. Before we start, let me take you to the objectives. By the end of this lesson, you should be able to identify singular indefinite pronouns, plural indefinite pronouns, and also some indefinite pronouns that they depend. Sometimes they are singular, sometimes they are plural. So that's the first objective. The second objective of today's lesson is to find and reorder inverted sentences. Third objective is to correct mistakes in subject verb agreement related to indefinite pronouns and also inverted sentences so guys let's start by watching part of this video let's talk about indefinite pronouns now this is quite a large category of pronouns as you can see although some of them overlap a bit with each other so if you look at another anybody uh, anyone anything they all start with any and that way you can definitely narrow them down quite a bit now what indefinite pronouns do is they refer back to a noun in the vaguest way possible so they have a very kind of vague reference point okay they don't refer to any specific person place uh, quantity or thing so no specific there we go, no specific person, thing, etc. Uh, and you can see that from these. So if you were to say no one, what, do, what does that actually refer to? Well, it refers to an absence of, of something, I suppose. Uh, so one way to think about these then is that... Okay, brother, so uh, so far we've talked about any, any word that begins with any, like anybody, anyone, anything. And also words that begin with every, like everybody, everyone, everything, nobody, no, no nothing, uh, somebody, someone. These words all refer to singular indefinite pronouns. So as we've learned uh, in this video, an indefinite pronoun refers to something that's not, that's vague or unspecified, like little, much, neither, nobody, and so on. These, the first group is called singular, are, are always considered singular, and they take a singular verb as well. The second group of indefinite pronouns are considered plural because they take a plural verb. Like if you can, if you say both students is or are, of course the answer would be are, because you're talking about both of them doing this, that action. So words like, or indefinite pronouns like both, few, many, others, and several, they all take a plural verb because they are plural indefinite pronouns. So we have some singular indefinite pronouns, plural indefinite pronouns, and we have some plural, some uh, indefinite pronouns that can be singular and also they can be plural depending on the noun that they refer to. For example, all of the students is or are, of course it's are because we're talking about students, which is plural. All of the students are absent today. And also you can say all of the cake is eaten or are eaten. All of the cake is because you're talking about cake, which is singular. So these these pronouns sometimes are singular, sometimes plural, depending on what comes after them. That's the summary of today's lesson. Let's go directly. If you open your books to page uh, 255, chapter 10, lesson 10.3, indefinite pronouns and inverted sentences here. The first thing is uh, uh, defining. You need to define what do you mean by indefinite pronouns, as we said. Uh, pronouns that do not refer to a specific person or place or thing or idea, we call them indefinite pronouns. And when used as subjects, some indefinite pronouns are always singular and some are plural. And in your book, these are some, not all, of the indefinite pronouns that, they, that are always considered singular. And these ones are always considered plural. And don't forget the ones that can be singular and can be plural. For example, here, each of the drawings is because each is always singular. Everyone is always singular, so it has. Both is always plural, so it takes are. Many is always plural, so it takes show, not shows. Regardless of the prepositional phrase that comes after them. So these are always singular and these are always plural. Depending on the word they refer to, the indefinite pronouns are these words. And I'd like you to highlight them. These ones, like words like are, all, these are the indefinite pronouns that depend on what comes after them. Like all, any, most, some. All, any, most, some are considered sometimes singular and are also 
plural can be either singular or plural other words in the sentence such as the object of the preposition in a preposition phrase can help you decide whether it's singular or, or plural for example here most of his work appears why appears here has an s because it's it's singular the, and how do i know it's singular because most of the work you're talking about the work so the word work here word work is singular so it appears as you know that a verb in the present takes an s if the subject is singular next example the photographs are interesting most are black and white most what definitely you're talking about photographs so most photographs photographs is plural that means you take a plural verb next point the next part is is about inverted sentences what do we mean by inverted sentences inverted sentences are if you go back uh, to page 155 identifying subjects at the bottom of the page you can find you can find about indefinite pronoun uh, sorry about uh, inverted sentences it says here that a verb comes before the subject in three cases first case is when you're having in this page at the bottom of the page you will find the table that uh, explains what are the cases in which we can have inverted sentences here like we have in an interrogative sentence in, like in a question here if you're forming a question the subject and verb are in, are, are inverted the verb comes before the subject for example is the computer lab open today and in order to make it clear for yourself you need to reorder the sentence so you have to turn the question into a statement is the computer lab open today when you change it you start with the subject you say the lab uh, the computer lab is open today the next case in which you need to use an inverted sentence is when the when the sentence begins with a phrase like here a uh, verbal phrase in the lab are five computers in the lab are five computers when you reorder the sentence also you will say five computers are in the lab so you start with the subject and then the verb and then the phrase the third case in which you use inverted sentence is when the sentence begins with here or there for example here comes the instructor of course who is coming it's the instructor so in order to find out what's the subject and to make it agree with the verb and the opposite you need to start with the subject first the instructor comes here or the instructor comes there or goes there when you go back to page uh, 255 inverted sentences are when the subject follows the verb or part of the verb phrase regardless of the subject's position in a sentence the verb must agree with it here are the oil paintings that I told you about. This sentence is inverted because you start with here. So in order to do order this sentence and, and form it in, put it in a statement form, you will have to say that the oil paintings that I told you about are here. Next sentence. Near the big mural in the lobby stands the statue. In this sentence, you start with a prepositional phrase. Near the big mural. So it's inverted. Next one. Under the box are the museum map also started here with a prepositional phrase why have the ceiling lights been flickering this is an asking sentence so when you have sentences that begin with here or there you using inverted sentences sentences that begin with prepositional phrases like preposition and then a noun preposition and then a noun you need to use an inverted sentence be careful to make the subject and verb agree and when you forming questions also the subject always comes between the helping verb and the main verb the helping verb and the main verb are considered verb phrase so the subject comes in between them. In next page 256, we have an exercise, proofreading sentences. You need to find out whether these sentences are correct or the subject and verb don't agree. The subject of a sentence is never part of a prepositional phrase. So whenever you have a prepositional phrase, it's not part of the subject. Neither of the trees has many leaves in this example here. The subject is neither, it's not of the trees. Neither and the neither is always singular. So singular, 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 singular subject and singular verb. Trees is the object of the preposition, not the subject. Be careful with this. Number one. So you need to, as I said here, proofread each of the sentences below for subject-verb agreement. If the sentence is correct, write correct. If a verb does not agree with its subject, draw a line under the verb and write the correct form. Let's start with number one. There was dozens of birds in the pine tree. This sentence begins with there, so definitely it's an inverted sentence. That's why... Can you think of the, what's the subject in this sentence? Good. It's dozens. Dozens is singular or plural? Of course, it's plural. Do they agree? No. Is this sentence correct? Of course not. How can I correct it? You have to change the verb and make it agree with the subject. What's the plural form of was? 
good it's where so in order to correct sent this sentence we will make it like the dozens where so we're going to cross this word out was and make it where now i want you to stop the video and start on your own answering these questions these 10 questions find out which one of them is correct which one is not correct and if it is not correct you need to correct it and draw a line through the verb and write the correct form make sure that again the subject of a sentence is never part of a prepositional phrase stop the video start okay now i want you to check your answers this is the model answer here we go now i want you to check your answers that's the model answer for number one as we said the word was has to be where because dozens is plural for number two one of the cows appear one is always singular so appears is the singular form of the verb appear under the branches begins with a preposition phrase so this is inverted here so that means the subject is after the verb a piece of steel bread of steel bread is preposition phrase so we'll ignore it we'll cross it out so you still have a piece a piece is singular so the verb is singular each is singular so the verb has to be always singular each of the of the words makes that's correct because makes is singular and each is singular on some of their legs is a tiny metal band on some of their legs is a prepositional phrase so this is inverted subject has to be after the verb is what a tiny metal band so it's the ma the band is the subject band is singular verb is singular and so on check your answers and if you have any questions please write it down in the comments or in the discussion forum okay brothers here we come to the end of today's lesson but before i finish the video when you open your weekly your uh, psychology account and you go to week 12 grammar you will find these links pre-discussion forum it has a question or two questions actually you need to answer them in the discussion forum in this before we start watching the video what are the indefinite pronouns and what are the inverted sentences reply post your answer under this discussion forum in the discussion forum and, so, and also you have a, a post discussion forum at the end of the uh, lesson so also at the end of the lesson you need to write your answer again if your answer was correct write a uh, no change in the ideas if you add it to your information feel free to update your information at the end of the video end of the lesson there is also a link for practice exercise in different pronouns a link to a video of indefinite pronouns and a link to a practice exercise agreement inverted sentences these links, if they don't work with you, you can simply go to your Pearson Realize account and you will find three uh, tasks assigned to you. The first one is indifferent pronoun. It's the video that, that we watch it part of it. The second one is exercise, multiple choice. The third one is indefinite pronouns. I wish you enjoy your time. Please stay safe and follow the Ministry of Health instructions to prevent the spread of coronavirus COVID-19. May Allah grant you peace in this life and the hereafter. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.